I want to know how many of you have a farming background. Uh, you, you, maybe you have either grown up on a farm or you've done more than like planted one seed in a pot and a flower came up, okay? You know what I mean. You have some sort of farming background. Raise your hands. Okay, look around. Here we are in one of the most modern cities in the world, right? And if you look at the people who just raised their hands, the majority of us have come from some sort of farming background. And if I were to ask you, uh, how many of you, maybe you didn't grow up on a farm or you weren't part of farming, but you grew up in a rural area, perhaps even more of you would raise your hands, right? Now you may, yeah, okay. So if, if we raise, then that's just about everyone unless you are a Hong Konger and you grew up in Mong Kok. Right? And then, then that wouldn't fit you. But there's something I think that's, uh, when we come to the Word of God, I think there's something that's co sort of encouraging about that because sometimes those of us from a farming background or from a very rural background, um, we may feel or others may look at us and sort of judge or think, you know, you were disadvantaged. You grew up out in the sticks, as we would say in America. You grew up out in the boonies. You grew up way out away from modern conveniences. You didn't have the advantages of this modern thing or that modern thing. And sometimes that may be somewhat true in certain areas, but that's not true when we come to the Word of God. And I think there's something that's a little bit um, that uh, is nice about it because of the background of the Bible and because of the times, the various times when the Bible was written, the Bible was written in a cultural context almost always uh, of farming or a, an agrarian lifestyle or a, a, a farm culture or planting and harvesting, a, a farming background. That's the culture of most of the Bible, certainly of almost all the Old Testament, but even parts, uh, parts of the New Testament as well. Um, even Paul talks a lot about farming. Even when they were, Paul was not a farmer, he was what? That's right. He was a tent maker by profession. That's what he had been trained to do. Um, but even Paul, even people who lived in cities at that time, or even somebody like Paul, because of the nature of the world at that time, still most likely would have had a strong knowledge of and would have been part of farming in some way. So when we come to the Word of God, if that's our background especially, there are some things that are a lot easier to understand or we identify very quickly, don't we, with certain things in the Bible. So when in the Old Testament, when we read uh, uh, in those books that are sometimes hard for us to understand in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, as, they, as Moses wrote about the laws of God for harvesting, plant this, do this, on the seventh year, let the ground rest and all of that. You understand that, don't you? Say, oh, yeah, yeah. And there's a very quick identification. And certainly when we come to the New Testament, we look at the teachings of Jesus when he talks about the parable of the sower. Uh, that was not, Jesus was not a farmer as far as we know. Uh, he was a carpenter or some people now say he worked with, um, uh, he worked with a, a building in some way. That's been some of the newer research says that's really maybe what that word means. We don't know that, but he would have still had a very agricultural or an agrarian background. And Jesus used examples that the people of that day could understand. So when we come to, for example, what the parable of the sower, right? The, the most, probably the most famous parable in the, in the New Testament that Jesus gave. A, a sower went out to sow, and some seed fell on this ground, and some seed fell on that ground. And so Jesus himself used examples that were easy to understand because the natural world of which we are part is a world that is created by God and he's the one that set the rules. He's the one that said this is how the world will function. This is when this is how the world will turn. This is when you will see stars in the sky. These are the movements of the waves. Even though man's fall and even though sin has influenced so much, God set this in motion. And God set the, set the rules and the boundaries, all of this. We look at it from our perspective now and we just think, well, that's nature, right? Well, that's how it is. God did it. God did it. This is how he said it. God's the one that said, this is, this is how a plant will reproduce. Here's this little seed. Amazing, just amazing. And so it's no wonder that when we come to the Word of God, all of these natural things uh, are filling the Word of God and, and they're throughout the Word of God because 
it is his world. There's an old hymn um, that some of us would know, but most of us won't. This is my father's world. How many of you know that song? Okay, oh, just a few of us, okay. But those of us that have some background, right? It's a wonderful, um, it's, it's a wonderful song, and it is. This is our father's world, even though sin has affected it. And so we come to the word of God this morning, and I want to, to uh, speak this morning from a passage and from a, a topic that I think you're very familiar with already. And so as we come to this, um, to me this is sort of a reminder message this morning, or sort of a post-it note message. How many of you use post-it notes? You have to remember something, you take it and you stick it somewhere so you won't forget it. Oh my goodness, those of you that have been in my house or in my office, Gigi could tell you. I had post-it notes everywhere, didn't I? Sticking here, sticking there on a book or whatever, don't forget this and don't forget that. And sometimes I look at it, now what was this? And then, so I, for me this is sort of a, a post-it note message, if you will, this morning. God began speaking to me about this almost three weeks ago and he put it, and this is what often happens. Sometimes the Lord, um, as, as pastors and as, as people who have the responsibility of bringing the Lord's Word to you week after week after week, sometimes um, God will bring something to us or bring something to our minds that's very, maybe that, that morning as we get up on Saturday as we're preparing. And other times, the Lord will put a thought in our minds that's just, we think, oh, it's something natural, but it just sort of, it's like a seed in our brain and it just stays there and it starts growing. We start thinking about it. We start thinking of other things. And it's, it's the Holy Spirit. Not because we're so great or smart and such wonderful orators or preachers, but because God really loves you and He wants you to hear His Word. And He has a message for you and for me every week that's fresh and alive and suitable for our, for our situations and for what we're going through. So this was, for me, started about two or three weeks ago. And then as I was listening to, happened to be listening to television one day, um, I heard a message uh, 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 about it, very much about it. It was like, okay, Lord, thank you for the confirmation. And, um, and so this is what I want to look at this morning. We're going to be talking about farming, but specifically I want us to talk and to consider for a while this morning planting and harvesting. Planting and harvesting. Uh, if you have a King James Version, it would be sowing and reaping. And I think maybe the NIV uses sowing and reaping as well. New Living says planting and harvesting. And so this is what we're going to look at uh, this morning and as, as the Holy Spirit brings us to our hearts. So would you join me as we talk about this this morning and look at the Word of God and ask the Lord to speak to our hearts this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we come to you this morning. God, we know that you are a living God and that you are a loving God. And so because of that, God, we know that you have a word. You have things that you want us to understand and to know and to respond to this morning. So Lord, here we are. And we just give you ourselves and our hearts again, and we say, speak to us, O God, and help us to hear your voice, and we will respond to you. We thank you for your words of life in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to look at a few verses that talk about planting and harvesting, sowing and reaping, and then we're going to look at our text for the morning. Um, let's put them up. These are some, this is one of my favorites. Oh, this is from Psalm 125, 5 and 6. And this is such an encouragement. We, if we have time, we'll come back to some of these. If not, we won't, but you've got them. And if you want to take notes, you can. I love this verse about harvesting, about planting and harvesting. So take a minute just to look at that. And let this be an encouragement to you this morning. If you have been praying about something, and coming to the Lord with tears about something, look at the promise that he gives in this verse in Psalm 125, 5 and 6. Those who plant, in fact, let's read it together. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with the harvest. What a beautiful, beautiful promise, isn't it? A beautiful promise. And those of you that have been waiting on the Lord and looking to the Lord and planting, because that's what you're doing as you go to the Lord in prayer, asking Him and bringing to Him a request, often for someone in your family, often for a loved one, or maybe in your own life or in a situation, and you cry as you come before the Lord, and you may be even saying, how long, O Lord, how long? And there are tears. 
Don't give up. Here's the promise of the Lord to you this morning, the planting and the harvesting. What does he say? You will harvest with shouts of joy. There will be a harvest. And that's one of the laws that God has set in his universe, both naturally and spiritually. When there's a planting, there's a harvesting. When there's a sowing, there's a reaping. That's one of the laws of God that cannot be broken, and as we'll see in just a minute. And I want us to look at it because there are positive applications and there are negative applications too, aren't there? This is one of the positive ones, and I love this. It says, you will weep as you go to plant the seed, but they will you will sing, but they sing as they return with the harvest. I love that, don't you? There are uh, there are expressions it's called the song of the reaper and I can imagine that and you know in every culture today are there not uh, those of us now if we sit in a tractor uh, at least in the in the West now most of the time it will be in a tractor but those of us uh, that are from cultures or backgrounds where still a lot of the harvesting is done by hand I'll bet if I asked you about it, you would say, yes, there is a song sometimes that they sing as they harvest in the fields. Stephen, is that true? Yes. Yes, it is. Do you know the song? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> he says, he says I'm, not a, I'm not a farmer. <laughs> okay. No, but there's a, there's a song, isn't there? The song of the reaper. Is it a sad song? No. No. It's a song of joy. It's a song of joy. And that's true. And not just in Ugandan culture, but in, in other cultures as well. And there are songs of joy. There are songs of reaping. Beloved children, beloved brothers and sisters, as Christians, there are songs of reaping. So as you cry and as you plant those seeds, you say, Oh God, oh God, there will be the time when you will have shouts of joy. And there will be time when you will sing the song of the reaper because the Lord has brought the harvest. Amen. Isn't that just oh, so great, isn't it? But that's not even our main verse today. Let's keep on going. So you, you can keep some of these in mind and come back on your own and meditate on, on them on your own. Let's look at the next one. Proverbs 22.8. Uh, this one's not quite so positive, but let's look at this one. Those who plant... Let's, shall we read it together again? Those who plant injustice will harvest disaster and their reign of terror will come to an end. Wow, what a caution, what a warning, isn't it? Those who plant injustice will harvest disaster. Here's something that, that, that we can look at as well before we go ahead to the main text. Look at the two words about planting and harvesting here, or look at the two expressions. Here we have plant injustice, and here we have what will the harvest be? Disaster. Which one seems worse? Injustice or disaster? Disaster. And here's one of the other laws of planting and harvesting. Whatever is planted, the harvest will always be greater. The harvest will always be greater, both positively and negatively as well. The angry word that we plant, the loss of temper that comes towards a loved one, will bring back not the same thing, not just the same thing, but more more and greater. And that's one of the warnings of the word of the Lord. And that's the, those are the laws of God that with the planting and the harvest, what is planted, whatever it is, the harvest that comes from that will be greater than what was planted. And that should be both an encouragement when we're planting well and a warning when we're planting poorly. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, look at this uh, Hosea 8.7. It's the same principle again. Um, when we look at Hosea 8.7, we're, we're looking just at the part of it. They have planted what? The wind. And they will harvest what? The whirlwind. The whirlwind. Oh, a wind can just be... But what is a whirlwind? Far, far worse, far stronger, and far more destructive, right? And so this, these, this principle is throughout the Word of God. There's the planting, it's a certain amount. The harvesting will always be greater. Look at Hosea 10. We're staying in the same, still in the Old Testament. We'll turn to the New Testament in a minute. Hosea 10, 12. Here's the, here is the, the prophet of the Lord, and what does he say? Plant the good seeds of what? Righteousness. Righteousness. And you will harvest what? A crop of love. Look at the comparison again. Okay? Uh, let me pause just a minute. 
meditate on that and we'll give our brothers and sisters from Wuhan and Guangzhou and the U.S. Come on in. Welcome. I, I, you know what? I went ahead and paused because I knew you wouldn't be listening to me anyhow. Okay. Let's give them a chance to, to get organized. Come on in. Do we need, uh, will we do mass?